Steve, this is such an important story. If anyone claims they care about income inequality, economic mobility, it starts with education. If we do not give kids a great education, how can we expect them to succeed? I want to share some videos I saw over the weekend because as these teachers are preparing for the strike, quite a few took to social media and they explained their reasons for striking. Watch this. Megan Atkins, she's a kindergarten teacher. She has taught in LA for 20 years. And over the weekend, she posted this video covering all the supplies that she, right there, they're covered up with white cloths. These are all of the supplies that she had to purchase with her own money out of her pocket. Look at it. It's pretty much most of the things in the classroom. She tells viewers that the strike is not something she wants to do, but it's something she has to do. Joining me now to weigh in on the strike, Lily Eccleson Garcia. She's the president Thanks, of the guys. National Education Association, the nation's largest union that represents three million educators across the country. Walk us through this. You are going to be there alongside these teachers today. How did teachers even get to that point? I look at that video, the majority of things inside the classroom, that teacher had to pay for herself to do her basic job. When I show up to work in the morning, I don't have to deliver the cameras, the pens, and the papers. It's what they provide for me. And I have the benefit of, well, I'll leave it there. Walk us through this. Uh, you know, uh, we probably have the only profession where you steal from home and bring it to work. Um, it's how it's how we uh, it's how we move. I'm a sixth grade teacher from Utah. I had 39 kids in my classroom. Here in Los Angeles, it's not unusual to find someone with 40 or 45 kids in one classroom. In their classroom. And, in, in one, one classroom. classroom with that one teacher. So when someone says, um, like this administration, you know, let's just talk about your salary. This is so much bigger than being paid a fair salary. Certainly that's something that these teachers and support staff deserve. But they are putting this all on the line because they love someone else's kid. Because they want those school nurses. They care about class size. They want a librarian. That's like finding a unicorn in this district. And so they are putting it all out there saying, we want to be in school. We want to be with our kids. We want to be doing the work we love. But we have said enough is enough. This administration has ignored the voices of the people who know the names of their kids. And who are they listening to? They're listening to the Betsy DeVos types, the billionaires that say, I don't know anything about public schools. Why don't we just turn it into a for-profit business? The charter industry has been growing in this district and everywhere that the charter industry has grown it's grown at the expense of your neighborhood public schools that's what this is all about when someone says there's no money why isn't there money and a big reason is because they've given it away to for-profit companies but haven't many charter schools started because of the terrible situation in public schools if i lived in a district where there was 45 kids in a classroom and to your point finding a librarian is like finding a unicorn i'd be desperate for another option so think about this if you're in the charter industry, what do you want to do? You want to create horrible public schools, joyless places that but people don't want to you escape. Mean, you mean to say that By all charter design. school? Hold on, please. That all charter school founders are there to drain public schools? Come on now. Oh, this is so. So let's be very, very clear. The billionaires who are behind this, the venture capitalists, the Wall Street guys are out to make money on public schools. So, so they can mean, find, so, so I'm there's, sorry. A, there's a vast, there's a vast difference in quality with charter schools and some of them are fabulous, wonderful places and some of them are scams. The, the issue is, when did we stop talking about making sure that every public school was as good as our best public school? When did we stop talking about making sure that every kid had what they needed in their neighborhood public school. It's one thing to talk about a choice, but what if the only choice that these kids are never given is the choice to have a great to die for public school in their neighborhood? 
And that is by intention. It's exactly what Betsy DeVos did in Michigan. And they did it in the poorest neighborhoods. They experimented with our most vulnerable children. Well, in a perfect world, every kid would get a great education. And right now, I can say that there are some great public schools, there are some great charter schools, but what you are trying to do right now is help all of those kids in Los Angeles, 500,000 who could potentially not have teachers to educate them in their classrooms today. Is there an argument to be made that we need to take a closer look at what benefits are? Many teachers have said, hold on a second. In LA, for example, there was a $2 billion reserve. Why isn't that going to us and our schools? What is the school district telling you? When I see $2 billion in reserve, I say, hold on a second. You could find smaller class sizes. You could find librarians with money like that. Yeah, you could. And so we're not buying this. There's no money out there. Uh, they could be doing so much more. And it, it's why I want to come back to that. Are they intentionally starving public schools because they don't want them to be places that people uh, feel good about? <laughs> And here's what is actually going on here uh, with these very courageous, brave educators who are going to be out on picket lines today. When you've given up working uh, with um, negotiations because you feel that the administration on the other side is not engaged in good faith bargaining, you take it to the streets, you take it to the public. When, when we saw that Red for Ed wave starting in West Virginia, Oklahoma, Arizona last year, they took it to the streets and the public then started to pay attention to what had been happening for years in their public school. It was invisible, it was quiet, and then they made some noise and they got something better for those kids. That's what we have to hope is gonna happen here, that parents and the public will stand beside us. We've got to find a way to give a good, if not a great education to every American child. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we have just been told that President Trump